while the world has been diverse for centuries together, it need not be plural. Invoking pluralism means a shift in which people have thought about what to do about that diversity. Pluralism, therefore, is different from plurality in the sense of being an active and reflexive, reflexive perception of the other. It implies more than mere coexistence of two or more communities at the same time and in the same space. It presumes that the coexistence was made into an issue either by those who are politically in charge or by the concerned religious communities themselves. In what follows, I ask whether Indian Islam has developed a theology of pluralism. In other words, do Indian Muslims have an understanding about other religious traditions? What kind of understanding is this? How to interact with them and what to do with religious diversity around them and within them, right? So one is not talking of pluralism at an inter-community level, but I'm also talking about pluralism at the intra-community level. In questioning this, I'm conscious that the Indian Muslims have been living with different religious communities since centuries, and that this coexistence has provided for the development of shared cultural and social traditions. But the question that I'm asking is a different one, which is that whether this popular practice of living and sharing together has been able to generate a philosophy of living with the other. In other words, is there space for religious pluralism within Indian Islam? A related question, and possibly where the answer might come from, would be to understand how these local traditions have been treated within the writings of Indian religious scholars. Uh, I will try to answer these questions in the following way. I try to understand the position of two important maslaks within Indian Muslim community. Uh, maslaks are rough, rough, roughly translated as sects, but I understand maslaks or denominations as interpretative communities. And two of these important communities are the Deobandis and the Barelvis. Now, to understand Deoband's position, I'm interrogating a text uh, written by Hussein Abad Madni which is translated as Islam and Composite Nationalism, which was republished uh, in 2005, uh, translated and republished in 2005 by Manohar, uh, and had a fairly longish foreword by Barbara Metcalf. Ahmed was the principal of the Uban Madarsa, as well as the president of Jamiat Ulma Hind, an apex body of Islamic religious scholars primarily belonging to the Deoband school of Indian Islam. Madni justifies his concept of territorial nationalism through recourse to early Islamic history in which the Prophet Muhammad had sought a covenant with the Jews of Medina in order to fight against a common enemy which was the unbelievers or the Kafirs of Mecca. Drawing parallel to the times that obtained in that original covenant of Medina, Madni argues that there is nothing wrong for Indian Muslims to have a pact, an entente, with the Hindus. Hindus and Muslims, therefore, become one qom. However, this qomiyat does not translate into a dialectical understanding of sharing between religious and cultural traditions. Right? So the millat is unalloyed. The sharing happens within this space called qom. Madni is well aware of the plurality of religious and cultural traditions in India when he speaks of non-Muslim communities living side by side in India. But this plurality, again, does not lend itself to pluralism. In order to make this transition from plurality to pluralism, Madni would have to forego his own notion of superiority of Islam over other religion. This he is clearly unwilling to do. Islam for him is the only true religion, and it is this conviction which leads him to claim that while being aware of the truth of their falsehood, which is, to paraphrase it, while being aware of the truth of other religions' falsehood, Islam is ready to cooperate and tolerate them. Such a notion of millat, apart from being orthodox, is also anti-history. Indian Islam is full of examples of sharing from other religious traditions, including Hinduism. Mm -hmm. This creative interaction has given birth to various Sufi heterodox traditions. Madni, being a member of the reformist tradition of Deoband, questioned many of these practices and collectively termed them as bid'ah, which is undesirable innovation and hence is un-Islamic. Trying to understand some of the writings of Ahmed Rizafa, uh, 
around who, around the personality and writings of whom the Barelvi identity actually gets formed in South Asia. Ahmed Riza argued that it was not permissible for a Muslim to cooperate with the Kafir, which is Hindus. Moreover, when the common enemy was a Christian, whom Islam regards the people of the book. So actually you are forging a unity with the Kafir to fight somebody whom the Quran says is the people of the book. And this is not, he says, justifiable according to Islamic tenets. At one level, this might indicate a tactical understanding of the movement, but Ahmed Riza's use of the word harbi, which actually translates as those with whom one is at war, and he uses the word harbi for Hindus, to describe the Hindus of his day, of his day suggests that his objection to any form of Hindu-Muslim cooperation went much deeper. Islamic reform can be understood as a process of return to the fundamentals of true religion, to purify it and to rid it of what is seen as harmful and non-essential accretions. Islamic reform calls for the obliteration of various customary practices, and I'm thinking about rituals associated during death, birth, marriage, you know, when some rituals are shared within, uh, between different communities. These customary traditions are basically increasingly be qu being questioned, not only by the Dilbandi understanding of Islam, but also increasingly by the Bareilly understanding of Islam. <laughs> so let me just end up by giving an example from my old field work, which I conducted in Azamgarh. Uh, there's a place called Mubarakpur, which is 70% uh, Muslim and 30% Hindu, right? Uh, and this is dominantly a Barelvi town, right? This is a weaving town, dominantly a Barelvi town. So what happens here? The Barelvi reform here has questioned many of the customary practices of, 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 and, and the shared traditions of, of, of Muslims. And Muharram is one of those sites that I want to talk about. Muslims were advised not to participate in the annual Muharram procession, as it is forbidden. They tell the Muslims, the Barelvis tell the Muslims, that it was a practice followed by Shia Muslims, and that Sunni Muslims should not indulge in procession, uh, in such religious innovation. It is worth mentioning that the making of taziyas during Muharram and its being carried in procession had been an age-old tradition, not only in Mubarakpur but across South Asia. The making of taziyas provided one occasion where religious boundaries were blurred. The Hindus of Mubarakpur partook in the making of the tazia and carrying it in the procession. Reformism, through its diatribe against the common cultural practices, sought to redefine and sharpen boundaries between communities. The Muharram procession today is solely composed of the Shias, since Sunnis have almost nearly withdrawn themselves from what was earlier a composite festival of the Qasbah. One hardly finds any Hindus from the Qasbah in such a procession now. Moreover, in earlier times, Hindu women went up to Taziyas, which was kept in different Imambaras and performed certain ritual prayers. It was their way of showing devotion to the Taziyah. Reformism has sought to end such practices, and Hindus complain that they cannot pray to the Taziyah as they used to do earlier because the Muslims object. In this case, the Shias actually object. Clearly then, the institution of Muharram, which was the common tradition of the people of Mubarakpur, gets reduced to a Shia occasion for the Sunnis, but for the Hindu, it becomes a purely Muslim affair. So we see the impact of reformism diminishes space for pluralism within community itself as well as at the inter-community level.